Hey, everybody, and welcome to Grace uh, Small Group's Testimonies. Uh, it's just a series of podcast episodes that we're doing where we bring in different people who are able to share their testimony that involves around small groups. Um, today, we are blessed to, with the presence of Andrew McDermott, one of our key ministry leaders. He is over men's small groups. So welcome. Thanks, Chris. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked that you're here. Uh, I'm stoked that you're really excited about men's ministry and everything that um, kind of is involved in that. I mean, you have like a lot of history with men's ministry, um, even outside of small groups, right? You used to be on the men's ministry team. Yeah, I actually am. I'm still currently still? On, the, okay. on the men's ministry team. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely involved in, in whether it be younger guys in particular in 1825 years ago, um, or currently, you know, part of the men's ministry team and um, the planning team that's a part of that as well. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things I, I love about your passion is that um, throughout pretty much, well, I won't say my whole time, but my more adult, um, my, more of my adulthood that I've known you, you've always been investing in younger men, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and me being one of those guys uh, where when I'd come back from college and stuff, you know, our friendship kind of bloomed in that way and mm-hmm. we like pour into each other there, but um whether you saw it that way or not, I think it was definitely you were one of the key guys that was like making an intentional space within their life to like come and pick me up to get coffee mm-hmm. or, you know, to like hang out with you just to run errands or something like mm-hmm. that. Like mm-hmm. those small moments were pretty big mentorship moments for me. You make me sound like I'm much older than you, but <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I know. That's, yeah, you're not. I didn't but, see it that way in particular, but uh, those were those were good times with, yeah. with a lot of guys um, doing that. Yeah, but I mean, any time that someone's a little bit older than mm-hmm. you and mm-hmm. they're taking some intentionality, sure. especially in that small window of life, like I'm in college, but you weren't like in college at that point. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was like, out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that kind of creates a little bit of a dynamic. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, which I'm comfortable with saying, yeah. you know. And, and, I, and I am older than you anyway. So <laughs> yeah, you are. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just don't like to admit that. But. Yeah, you're so old now. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so when it comes to small groups, right? Mm-hmm. What impact has small groups had in your life? Um, I'd say a very large one. Um, really, since I was a, a young kid, um, mm-hmm. I was, you know, involved in. Well, my parents were involved in small groups that that we as kids, my siblings and I, uh, went to every time. Basically, we would be babysat by someone from the church. Um, I remember. There was a, a young a young woman, uh, Joanne Ballone, was my first uh, babysitter. Um, and shout out! Yeah, shout out <laughs> in case she's out there. I know she's she's out there somewhere. Uh, she was an awesome babysitter. But um, it was um, you know a great experience for us as kids, just knowing that our parents were uh, involved with people that were clearly their friends, and mm. we did a lot of things uh, as a small group that were outside of Bible study. You know, there's Bible study every Saturday. Um, and, um, they, we would also go camping as a small group. We would do life as a small group. I was friends with many of the boys that, that were, um, children of the people in the small group. Yeah. And, uh, it's just something that really framed my childhood. It was a huge part of it for sure. Yeah. And then, uh, growing up that kind of stuck with me as like, that would be my life eventually, you know, it'd be a part of a small group, you know, just naturally. Yeah. Um, and, um, it turned out that the first one I was most involved with was 1825. Um, mm. you know, um, I did go to small groups throughout, um, throughout my, uh, high school years at Grace on uh, Wednesday nights. Yeah. And then, uh, it came when I was in college age, 20 something age, um, that there was an opportunity to help lead, um, 1825 and kind of shaped the vision and culture for that ministry. Yeah. And, um, and that was, uh, every Friday night, uh, it was very important part of, um, my development, you know, in small groups in general. And, and then that kind of led to, uh, being asked to join the men's ministry team mm. a few years ago, which, um, mostly constitutes as a, uh, planning team and, yeah. and sort of watches over uh, the small groups of men that meet at Grace and uh, helps to facilitate uh, resources and support for those groups as well. So um, it's really had an impact from childhood all the way through to today. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, what's funny is uh, in the last episode, I was interviewing Alexa and her 
her experience, her testimony basically is really similar to yours in regard to like small group. And mm. I asked her this question. I asked her if your parents, do you think that your parents' involvement in small groups like helped to kind of form that habit or that like desire for a small group in your own life? in your adulthood like if that almost like if that wasn't there like if if you didn't see that it was important in your parents life mm -hmm. do you think you would have seen it as important in your life today uh it's a really good question um no i don't think i would have seen it as important as uh, if 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 they hadn't done that um mm. i think it it really did it was so um like shaping for me and that sounds really vague and cliche but like i really looked forward to and expected Saturday nights you know mm. that was like something that I mean for me it was just I was having fun with my friends and and I knew my parents were pleased yeah you know like they're pleased to go every time they weren't like begrudging to go and that was something that was very it really gave a really great foundation and made you feel secure as a kid you know that sort of yeah. thing um to know that your parents were involved with people that they really cared about and wanted to see mm. and um that as a kid that really sticks with you for sure you know and i know i've known alexa for many uh, my, almost my whole life you yeah. know her whole life um because we've been involved in in uh circles um and so I, i'm not surprised that that's her experience too you know i i definitely i'm not particularly today involved in a group that I could say looks like the one my parents was in, but that desire is so strong that it's hard to describe with words. Yeah. To, to have that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, um, what do you think would allow for you to be able to step into a place where you are in a group like that? Um, well, now that I'm an, ad an adult and I see what it's like to, to have something every Saturday night, for example, or every Friday night, um, yeah. it really does speak volumes to my parents and their friends' commitment to yeah. each other. So to answer your question, it would just be commitment, you know, like make carving out the time and the space, um, you know, it's, it would be easy for me to say, oh, life must have been different for them back then. You know, <laughs> yeah, like you know, it must have been slower for them yeah. when, when they were my age, you know, yeah. going to small group and stuff. And uh, that's just not true. You know, like they must have had, you know, just as much going on as I do right now. And um, it's, it's really no excuse for me to. I mean, it is an excuse uh, to, to not be a part of those groups because like, oh, life is so busy or like I'm in this particular season and those things might be true. But um, if I really want it, you know, yeah. if I really want to be a part of that, like I can step up in some leadership and, and some ownership and say, um, I'm going to commit my life to these people and to this studying of this word or, or um, these books or, um, yeah. and, and, and like it was for my parents beyond that night but also mm. into like doing life with one or having our children be you know exposed to one another and and become friends and things like that so yeah. um you know it's yeah it takes a lot i mean now that i see it you know it didn't seem like that when i was a kid but now that i yeah. see it it does take a lot and that's that's the answer to your question is it would just take um the willingness to say i'm gonna step up and and own this and commit to this mm. with these people and have other people do the same you know, you can't do it alone. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be showing up in my own house alone every Saturday night. Yeah. And, yeah. Exactly. So, like, who is, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> so. why I think small <clears throat> groups. Small groups. You yeah. know, like yeah. literally, literally in the name, <clears throat> small groups. Right. Because if if you have a group of of six, right? So that's three couples. Sure. Assuming that everyone's in a stage of marriage or yeah. they're dating or something yeah, like that. Sure. Sure. Then you have six people where if one couple doesn't show up, that's a pretty big deal. You know, yeah. If you have like twenty people in your group mm -hmm. and one couple doesn't show up, it's not really that big a deal. Yeah. You know, then you have people who are like not really committed. But if you have six people, like that level of intimacy, vulnerability, commitment, like that's so real, and you can kind of plan around. Okay, there's just two other couples that we need to plan our calendar with. That is still a huge commitment. It is. It like is. Uh, in my small group, the first night we met. We literally sat for an hour and a half trying to figure out how we were going to make our calendars work. Yep. Not even like, what are we going to learn? What are we going right, to talk right, about? Right. It was just like, let's line this up. Yeah, let's line this up. Like, what time do you get off of work? Whose house? How can we rotate? Who's going to be cooking? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. all of these, all these, the you have vacation coming up. So then what about that? You know, like all of these different things where yeah. we had to really sit down 
and talk through our calendars, you know? I really like that, that you did that for your first group. Like, I think that that's awesome. Logistics are so much of life and, you know, I, I'm really into logistics. I'm in that field and everything, but, um, I think that's really cool that you guys, you guys said, forget, you know, studying the first night or, or even the second night, whatever, let's just plan to make sure that we continue this because otherwise it's going to fizzle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then, and then there was that commitment of, okay, once it's locked in, like, cause the first time you meet, it's kind of like, all right, we have a couple things planned out because we weren't sure we were going to meet yet. So we've already said yes to things up ahead. And so because of that, we're going to have to pivot here and there. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then after that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for us, it's Thursday nights on Thursday nights. We don't plan anything right. else on that day. Right. We actually plan around the fact that our Thursday night is occupied, I like you know? That. Yeah. And so it's like, that's like a cemented like day in in the week kind of thing sure um and then you can get to that point but yeah. you're not going to immediately be at that point yeah. right and so that's why you have to really put in put in the work like earlier on and yeah. stuff like that yeah. so um that's a little tip for anybody who's kind of wondering what you know maybe they want to start a group but they're not really sure who's going to show up or yeah. if they'll be able to commit it's like it's going to be hard you yeah. know but that's also why it's beneficial to keep it small yeah i think that that that's huge like that small part i mean but that makes me think even more about my parents it wasn't a small group yeah they were, it was actually a small big group, group. yeah they a had a lot group. of people coming they in. did there was like i want to say probably families there was seven families maybe something like that you yeah. know the rodmans mcdonald's leclairs so uh, a bunch you know and yeah. so um, yeah, maybe, maybe five, five to seven people, families, but like, that's a lot of people, but keeping yeah. it small or keeping it small relative to your season of life, yeah. um, is, is good. You know, I think if you have kids that are all around the same age, that really helps because you kind of don't have a life outside of your, yeah. uh, outside of other parents who have kids your same age, like that just becomes your life. Like, yeah. you know, and so yeah seasonal yeah. life helps yeah if you're a young adult i mean have 20 people over your house like whatever. sure yeah you know, we, i mean like, we used to do that too you yeah. know like when we were you know not didn't have kids or you know were engaged or something like that you know yeah. life is so different and you can you can have more people yeah. but yeah it gets you get more more and more reduction over the yeah. uh, over the course of your life which is not a bad thing it's not a bad thing it's no. actually really cool yeah kind of the way that that yeah. all pans i love out. it i have an yeah. analogy for that like I think, you know, when you reduce something in a pan on a stovetop, for example, like, for yeah. example, sugar and butter, when you reduce it, it makes caramel, essentially. Mm. And I, I, I think about it that way. Like, it gets sweeter. You know, the, yeah. more, li- the more, life reducer, more life reduces, the sweeter it gets, really. So mm. that's um, a good analogy. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So in terms of men minis- men's mm-hmm. ministry, because you're, you're the key ministry leader for men's small groups, so you're kind of setting the vision as to what this is going to look like. If, you know, men need something small group related, they can go to you and ask you questions and, you know, hear counsel from you, like all these different kinds of things, right? Um, what makes you specifically excited about men's ministry at Grace? And we were actually literally just talking about how men's ministry is like a core yeah, part or, of like just, our church just prior to this this podcast yeah, yeah that that um yeah so what excites me most about men's ministry and just men you know coming into grace in general is that um i know that where men go their families go you mm-hmm. know i know that you know yeah. we, that's what we were talking about yeah i know that um you know if if a man comes and sees like, hey, this is a great place for my children or a great place for my wife and I, you know, um, and they're they're exposed to ministries and opportunities and events and uh, preaching of the word and all these um, positive like aspects of going to church, yeah. then they continue to come and they continue to grow, you know, and so... Um, being a part of the men's ministry team allows me to be able to, um, you know, hopefully craft you know, a schedule and a year that, um, you know, be a part of a team that crafts those things that actually bring men in and, and continue to encourage them and, and inspire them through men's breakfasts, through those types of things. And so, yeah, that's what excites me most, I would say. It's just like knowing the impact that it has. Yeah. Um, and then when I, for me, for me personally, I, I really am excited to see when, uh, like, young guys, like, when I was 18 to 25, I loved to interact with young guys who who weren't in relationships, you know, yeah. most of the time. Usually they were they were single or, or maybe dating or something, and they were just trying to figure life out, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, a friend of mine, Kenny, and I, this past semester for small groups, um, yeah. we had some young guys 
come on Wednesday nights. Just, just it was uh, three guys and and Kenny and myself, so five total. Yeah, and uh, we. Um, and actually, a, f- a fourth guy actually started coming late in the in the group, which is awesome. And so, yeah, and uh, he started coming to church. And too. he started coming to church. Yeah, which so that was really very cool. cool. And then he brought Brandon. his girlfriend. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's which fair. is really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. And so, um, no, but just to to, to to touch on that, I I would get really like jazzed about young guys who are just trying to figure stuff out. They're probably like early twenties or like just about to hit their twenties. Yeah. And um, you know, I think so many men go through the same exact course as yeah. one another yeah. and they don't even know it. Yeah. They're all just trying to figure out what it means to be a man, yeah. you know, and like, yeah, they come from different backgrounds and they come from different um, experiences and stuff yeah. and different households. But usually they're all asking that same question is like, how do I become a man? They don't ask yeah. it out loud usually, but yeah. you know, that's, that's sort of like their, the face that they have and the, and the, the attitude that they have. Yeah. And, um, I love to try and like, you know, say, Hey, like I'm not much removed from you, yeah. Like, but I do have a tiny bit of perspective, and yeah, you know, like I can I can help you know point out how there is nothing more manly than you know following Christ, and there's yeah. nothing more like manly than being someone who doesn't just say that they follow Christ, but actually acts like it. And you know, there's so many things in the Bible about the way men should walk, and yeah. young young men in particular, and yeah. Proverbs and and Psalms, um, yeah. and so. Yeah, those things excite me personally, like young men ministry, mm. but um, um, but men's ministry in general is is super cool in my opinion, just yeah, because it has such an impact on on the church as a whole. Never mind grace, but the church as a whole globally too. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. And and so with that, I mean, if you're a young man or if you're a man in general listening to this episode right now, and mm-hmm. you're like thinking about you know wanting to join a group, to like make the jump for yeah, real, like, totally do it find a community if there isn't a community that's available to you then make it you make know it, yeah. Like, yeah you can start it up just like say hey you want to meet with me at a coffee shop or you want to you know get lunch with me or slowly kind of start to build that out yeah. there's you know uh one member of our church was telling me how he used to uh um when he was you know before he was a christian mm-hmm. there was a guy who would come up to him and he would tell him like, hey, why don't you just come out to lunch with me? You know, mm. a couple of guys, we have a small group that just meets for lunch, you know, just come on out, come on out. Mm. And they were kind of like a business kind of group yeah, type of thing, yeah, yeah. you know, and then, uh, and then he, you know, he finally was like, ah, oh, you know what? Sure, I'll come. And so then he came out and then his life pretty much was changed. Yeah. Like it was because, and this is why, you know, I've, I've really been waving that flag of like change happens in the context of community. Yeah. Like when a, when a man sits down with another man mm-hmm. and is able to just be real. Be real, yeah. You know, it changes the game. Totally. You know, uh, to be able to say, hey, what you're going through, me too. Yeah. But Christ. Yeah. You know, like, whoa. Yeah. That's, that's, literally, that's literally what men long to hear is that they actually can become the man that they were made to be. Mm. But the way in which they become that man is through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. No other means. Yeah. By no other means will a man ever become the man that he was meant to be. You know, and and that's the truth that we have to like shout from the rooftops. Totally. Um and that happens through men's small groups and men's ministry. Yeah. So what would you say, and I've said a, a little bit, but what would yeah, you say sure. to someone who's like, you know, thinking about wanting to join a group but they're like a little hesitant to do so? Um very simple, like if you if you're hesitant to do so, I'm imagining that means you'd be hesitant to, to lead one. That's okay. Um, just ask someone, like ask someone in the church, like say like, hey, um, you know, I'm thinking about doing this, but I don't really know what direction. Like ask myself, ask Chris, you know, ask, Chris, um, ask any of the other men on staff, um, and they'll be able to connect you very, very quickly. Like myself, I, I, I know one, actually that group that I was um, doing last fall, yeah. I'm not able to continue. I, I just had a, a son uh, on New Year's Day. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty <laughs> awesome. It is uh, awesome. But uh, so, so life's a little different for me right now So this season. I'm not able to be doing that once a week. Yeah. And so one of the guys that were in our small group who wasn't the leader, wasn't Kenny and myself, said, you know what? I'm going to do it in my own house this semester. Yeah. And like guys who want to come, like continue to come and I'm going to ask a couple other new people. And like, so I know one 
place that I can point you right now. Like if you're, yeah. if that's you, you're listening to this podcast and you're saying like, um, I'd really like to be a part of a group of people who are asking the same questions as me and trying to find the same answers as me. And uh, I know one place I would just send you, boom, like yeah. that. And so that's the simplest. Um, you know, what would I say to somebody who's hesitant is, is just ask. Because yeah. Because there are people who will help you and connect you very easily. It won't yeah. be like a, oh, I'll get back to you in a week. It, it, it'll be that day. It'll yeah. be in that conversation even possibly, you know. Yeah. And so um, that's the fastest. And then other than that, um, if you are feeling brave, if you're hesitant but feeling brave, I would say definitely, like Chris said, like take the leap. Um, it's not that... Um, it's not as intense as you might imagine it be. Yeah. We, we, Chris and I both know a young woman who... Um, pretty much a brand new Christian. She just said, I'm just going to start a, a small group in my house and I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to start it and I'm going to have people come over and yeah. uh, I'm going to try and get some people around me who, who I think do know what they're doing. And, and um, that small that small group bloomed for a long time, you know, yeah. and, and it impacted a lot of people. Yeah. And so um, she just took a, a leap of faith and that's a woman, of course, you know, yeah. we're talking about men's ministry, but um but guys, Principle guys still can stands. Do too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So and mm -hmm. like, there's this huge support team totally around people who want to start a Bible. That's a study. good point too. You know, yeah. like that more more now than ever. Really, before mm. is if you're thinking, you know, what I want to start a Bible study. Like, just a couple guys come over or meet up. Like, but I'm not really sure what the, my first step is. Mm -hmm. Let me just talk to us. That's yep. why we're here. That's, that's why we're here. Yeah, that's yep. why we have all this structure to our team. It's so that the structure creates a great foundation for anyone who wants to jump in for the first time to yep. lead a small group. And we want to set you up with someone to co-lead you, co-lead with you, or just to kind of like, you know, help you figure out what's your first meeting going to look like right. or what's a real like expectation or, right. you know, like... There's a lot of wisdom in this church to pour out, and we, and we want to make it as available and accessible to you as possible. Yeah, and in a timely manner. I mean, I think a huge thing is, like, people get brave enough to ask, and then they get put on the back burner, and it's weeks to go by, and they just kind of say, yeah, I'm moving on, you yeah. know, sort of thing. And, like, that's not going to happen. And I, I really yeah. hope that doesn't happen, but I can say that almost full confidence, like, that's not going to happen. Like, um, you know, people are going to hear what you're saying and say, like, oh, this person... Yeah. needs help okay yeah Here, here's where you can go and so yeah. like chris said you know that's it's a great a great time in particular for grace because we are starting this you know we've just had our first semester and we're starting our second semester of this new initiative for small groups yeah and um and there's really a great structure for for, yeah. for men who want to join or start a group yeah it's an exciting time so thanks everybody for listening yeah and thank you andrew for being on thanks i'm happy to be here yeah, yeah. and we'll uh we'll catch you guys in the next episode Bye. Talk soon. Bye.